Next up, we have a Connie Lingus. Do we have any Connie Linguses here? Connie, Connie, Connie. Oh, there you are, sweetie. Nice to meet you. So what brings you in here? <laughs> Your Shopify store is not making any sales. <laughs> Your TikTok ads are making you nauseous. Yeah. Your Shopify conversion rate's bringing you knots to your stomach. Well, honey, you might be pregnant or you just don't know how to succeed with e-commerce. So let's just take a seat right over here and I'll explain a few things that I've learned in my few short years in e-commerce. I'm going to be completely transparent. This video will be a thousand times less entertaining than most e-commerce videos you watch. So if you're eating your macaroni and cheese while YouTubing, hoping to be entertained, then you might as well just watch a dropshipping challenge by Sarah Finance or another YouTuber that makes you think that e-commerce is just looking up hashtag TikTok maybe by creating a crappy Shopify website, throwing up a crappy ad and making bank. But before we get into this video, if you are looking for the best chance to see success in e-commerce, if you are a complete beginner, I would say it is working with a done for you agency like mine where we can do the product research for you, build custom code of one product stores and film custom ads that are proven to work on TikTok ads. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want the fastest way to scale to one grand a day or more, click the link down below and book a call. So I really just want to explain why I feel like people succeed and why they don't in e-commerce. And I don't even really consider myself much of a success. I have scaled some brands past six figures. I'm probably cumulatively over seven figures in revenue, but there is still so much that has to be learned from me to be able to improve to get to eight or nine figures. Now, I know for a lot of you watching this video, my channel attracts beginners. So if you're wondering, how do I go from zero to 100,000 in the fastest amount of time? I believe the number one problem that most people have is the Dunning-Kroger effect. And that's the belief that if you have learned just a little bit about a certain topic, you feel like an expert. So this graph basically explains all of you right now watching this video where you're probably at the peak of Mount Stupid, where you think you know everything about e-commerce and dropshipping because you watched maybe one Gabriel St. Germain course from 2018 that's completely irrelevant now today, but you've watched maybe a few of my videos and you're feeling very confident, you know a little bit about TikTok ads, but the reality is there is still so much more you need to learn. I would consider myself probably around here when it comes to e-commerce because when comparing myself to Nick Shackelford or Davey Fogarty, people that have scaled brands to eight and nine figures, the amount of details, split testing, analytics, tracking, team management, and things that they know compared to me, it's incredible. I would consider myself as knowing maybe one to 2% of what e-commerce really has to offer. So for most of you, while you think you might know everything, you really don't. So the first thing you need to realize is you need to have humility and perspective, and you need to understand that you have a lot of weaknesses and blind spots. And I remember when I was first starting e-commerce, I thought I knew everything. Legitimately, I would throw up some ads and I'm just like, why am I not profitable? Because when I first started, it took me about seven months to see anything that was profitable. And it was mainly because I didn't even realize my ad sucked. I can't believe how much money I wasted on absolutely terrible creatives like this one right here where the Photoshop is just so poorly done. I mean, you can see these pixels. I'm just like thinking to myself back then, man, this is a million dollar ad. These people are going to love this offer $20 off. Who is going to resist that? But really, it's amazing how little you know and how much blind spots you have where you might think, man, this ad is perfect. This website is absolutely beautiful. But when you actually compare it to big brands and you should be doing that, you should be going out to people ads. You should be going on to AdSpy and always studying what the big boys are doing so that you can model that and improve your game because you don't know where the standard is until you know where your competition is. It's kind of like if you're a basketball player and you think you're the best player in the world because you just never watch the NBA. And that's what a lot of e-commerce brand owners do in the beginning. They think they know everything just because, oh, compared to my friends or compared to local brands, I'm better than them, so I must be the best. But legitimately, if you go to bigger brands like this one right here, this Lash Company, I mean, there's some great branding, Afterpay. Look at the style, the flow, the graphics, all having the pink background. Is your website up to this standard? Probably not. So there's definitely some things that you can do to improve. And even if a website looks good, there are still things you can improve and doing split tests and split testing add to cart colors, split testing fonts, split testing graphics, UGC, videos in your description. There's so many things you can play with. You're never going to have the perfect offer or website or ad in the beginning. So if you're not getting great results, you just need to realize it's because you don't have the skills developed yet. And the only way you're going to get better at improving these weaknesses is just through consistent practice. I mean, obviously everyone says practice makes perfect, but I really believe when people talk about, okay, what's advanced dropshipping? What's advanced e-commerce? It's just being good at the basics. If you can do the very basic things at a high level, you're advanced. It's as simple as that. There's no advanced strategies or doing cost caps, bid caps, all this crazy stuff. I really assumed that for myself as well. And that was a weakness I had in my game, media buying. I sucked at it and I thought it was because I didn't know these advanced concepts when reality was I talked to some of these best media buyers out there and they made me realize it was just a lot of the core beliefs I was taught from other gurus 
they were just wrong. And that was the thing that I had to realize that I needed to be more patient with my ads when analyzing. I can't just kill something after a day or just give up on a product super easily because it's not matching the KPIs. No, you have to be able to analyze your numbers. If I'm at this certain add to cart number and that's doing really well, but my ad costs are too high, I need to be able to make adjustments and give things more time. So as a media bar in my own career, I have not had a lot of success with Facebook ads, but I realized it was just because I wasn't giving it enough time. I wasn't testing enough creatives. And the difference between me and someone who spent millions in ads is usually they just put more budget into what was already working instead of doing all these different split tests. And it just sounds so basic, but that's really what it is. If you want to get good at website building, you just got to build websites over and over and over again, slightly make tweaks and slightly refine. And it's the same thing with advertising. The way I got pretty decent at ads is I studied so many ads. I studied thousands of ads. I wrote down the frameworks. I wrote down what I noticed was the common trends. And if you're able to study up first, it's going to dramatically improve your learning. So just assume you absolutely know nothing. And if you really are wondering what are my blind spots, you should probably get a mentor and they're going to be pretty transparent as to, all right, this is the area you need to improve upon. Maybe it's your time management. Maybe you're not putting enough time into your product research and that's why you have really shitty products, but your websites and marketing really aren't that bad. So in a lot of cases, it's like if you're a golfer and you're just not hitting the ball right, but you can't really see yourself swing, you need a coach that can correct you. And that's what really helped me break through. I had a mentor with Noah Brewer who taught me about Facebook ads because he had his own agency where he was doing hundreds of thousands of split tests and he was able to pass on that knowledge to me, which which helped me find my first product that was able to scale to $50,000. And I would have never gotten there if I didn't realize, oh my gosh, this mentor told me my ads suck and I really need to step up my game there. And when you learn new information, your belief should always be changing over time. If you have the same set of beliefs and you are always doing everything the exact same way that you were doing a year ago, there's something wrong. And I know a year ago, I was big on always doing interest targeting and always finding products that are niche down because I'm doing interest targeting. And I've realized recently with TikTok ads, with having my agency and doing hundreds of thousands of tests, that general products work better for me, that going broad on TikTok works better, and that doing interest targeting, while it does work, when I personally have split tested compared to broad, broad has always performed better for me. And maybe for you, interest will do better, but it always comes down to split testing and trying out all these different theories out there because you never know what's gonna work for you. Now, I know that last point may have actually made you a bit frightened, especially if you're someone who falls into the category of an overthinker, someone who procrastinates. They're not comfortable with the unknown, but the reality is if you are somebody who's watching a ton of YouTube videos and you're wondering why you haven't seen success, probably just because you're not taking enough action on the information that you're learning. I know personally for me, whenever I listen to a podcast, whenever I see a tweet and I write it down, I have to take action immediately upon that information or I'm just going to forget it. And so many people think that, okay, I need to learn everything before I get started. That way I'm super prepared. You're never going to be prepared. I've started over 15 e-commerce brands over the last four years, and I still don't know half of what is out there in e-commerce. And I never use that as an excuse though, because you have to take action. You can't just be someone who's constantly learning, 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 and you think, okay, I'm going to get to that point where once I get started, it's eventually going to have to work because I just know everything. You're never going to know everything. And you're only going to learn once you get on the job with these things. And that's what makes e-commerce exciting. There's always new challenges and problems that you have to solve, whether that's handling customer service for the first ever time or order fulfillment and logistics or setting up your first ever SOPs for how to create your ads so that when you hire your first video editor, they know exactly how to create it in the style that you like. And that's that's what's really great because all this information you're not going to have accessible in your head at once. It's just going to be stuff that you learn throughout time. Now, obviously you can speed up your learning curve through courses and through mentors, but if you're not putting that action to use, you're not really retaining it. And when you look at a lot of the most successful dropshippers, I can guarantee they are some of the dumbest people out there. I am not that smart. I did not go to college. When I looked at a lot of other people, Noah Brewer, my mentor, he dropped out of high school. When you look at Tanner Plains, all these other guys, they did not go to college. They are not incredibly intelligent people. We're just people that took a lot of action. We were incredibly motivated to see some success and we just wanted to put in the effort and we did not care about the risks or the consequences. And if you're someone who can't handle high risk, then you're probably just not meant to be an entrepreneur. Maybe you can watch these videos and sure, learn a few things, but then just get a job at an e-commerce brand if you really like e-commerce and you can't take that risk. So it doesn't matter how intelligent you are if you want to see success with e-commerce, but you need to be obsessed. It is a non-negotiable. I remember the first time I learned about dropshipping when I was 16 years old. I locked myself into my room. I could not believe there were teenagers making this much money that had no high school diploma. So I locked myself into my room. My parents probably thought I was depressed or autistic probably a little bit of both on the spectrum at least, because I literally had no friends. I wasn't playing video games. I was just 12, 
14, 16 hours a day researching e-commerce, building websites. I was so obsessed to learn new details and new minutia. And you have to have that Kaizen approach with e-commerce or whatever it is you're trying to see success in. Because if you're not obsessed with it, if you're not getting into it for the right reasons, you're going to get demotivated. You're never going to see success. And especially if you're just doing it solely for the money and that's the only thing that motivates you to getting into e-commerce, it's going to be a long haul for you because it might take 6, 12, 18 months to be successful. So you're probably going to quit a week in or a month in. And the other people that really were obsessed, like me, the autistic kids, are going to actually see success because we just stuck with it longer. We were obsessed and we were dedicated to improving our craft every single day. And it also gets to a certain extent where when you learn so much information, it's going to make you procrastinate. So if you learn 10 different ways to do one thing, I would say that's less valuable than learning the best way one time of how to do something. So whenever you're doing anything, which is maybe TikTok ads, you should only have one person you listen to. Probably moi, because you know I know a thing or two about it. Obviously, I'm still learning myself. But when it came to every single aspect of e-commerce. I always have one person I listen to. For copywriting, I have one person. For website building, I have one person. For CRO, I have one person. So you need to be able to identify all of the different skills, all the different buckets that will get you successful in e-commerce and have one person that you follow their one strategy for how to do that one thing. Because when you listen to five different people about how to do Facebook ads, it's just going to overcomplicate things. It's going to make you overthink. You're going to do so many split tests and you're not going to learn anything or really retain it or master any one of those skills or frameworks because you're constantly hopping from this to that, from this to that. And then you're wondering, why am I still not getting success? Now, obviously, when you start your first e-commerce brand, it's incredibly exciting. You're diving deep into the world of unknowns where all this mystery and intrigue is, all these different things that you can learn about CBOs and copywriting and CRO. But the thing is that I see trip up a lot of entrepreneurs, and this is why they're just never successful, is they cannot problem solve worth a damn. And I would say that's 90% of being a CEO it's just putting out fires because you're always going to have fires with the logistics company not having enough inventory, with your ad accounts being banned, with people not being happy with your product. It's always going to happen even if you're the most perfect product in the world. People are going to find a way to be upset or if your delivery is a little slow, people are going to be upset about that. So you have to be someone that's constantly refining, that's constantly looking for solutions to problems because there's never going to be a day when there is not a problem. So if you're someone who gives up early at the first obstacle, you're just never going to succeed and you have to realize there are going to be periods, especially when you first start, where months will go by and you have not made a single cent. You have put all these hours, hundreds of hours into your e-commerce brand, into your ads, into your creatives, everything, and you are still not profitable. So if you're someone that's also driven by money and you're looking for instant results, there's absolutely no way you're going to succeed because it usually takes about a year or two to actually see success with e-commerce. I was lucky. It took me about seven to eight months, but if I did not have a mentor helping me and identifying what my weak spots were, I can guarantee it would have taken a year or two, 100%. So if you are someone that is looking for instant gratification, e-commerce is not for you. It really isn't. It takes so much planning. It takes so much problem solving. And if you're someone that can't handle stress very well, you're just not built out for it. I mean, being an entrepreneur is incredibly difficult and you're gonna have these periods, even when you do scale to $1 million, $2 million a month, where you're gonna have incredible problems where your business isn't doing as good as it should be. Ad accounts get banned, people are unhappy, your employees are mad at you. So if you can't deal with all these struggles, man, it's just probably not the right fit for you. And I would say that's one of the most common trends I see in the successes. When people are resourceful, and I've coached hundreds and thousands of people on e-commerce, it's always the people that are resourceful, that are self-reliant, that try to solve problems first on their own, that make the most money. And when I ever see people that are just constantly asking questions and looking for other people to solve their problems for them, they never succeed with e-commerce. That's just not how it works. You have to be someone who initially, when you're starting your brand, you have to work hard. You have to identify as the person that's going to work harder than everyone else. And then once you do scale to about six, seven figures, that's when you use your time. You leverage that by having more people that are doing those other tasks for you. Now, I'd say one of the main reasons why people fail in e-commerce and dropshipping is you don't act your budget. And first off, what is the proper budget you need for e-commerce? I mean, for most business models out there, you're going to need 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, maybe even a million dollars to start. But with dropshipping, I would say if you just have three to five thousand dollars, you're pretty much set. But you're going to have to realize you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to invest into a lot of apps and a lot of products and into a lot of ads that are not going to get a return at all. And that's when you need that cushion so that you can spend, let's say, two hundred dollars and waste that on a bad product, but be able to move on and test more and more and more. Because I would say in general, if you're a beginner, 
it's probably about a one in 20 chance you're going to find a winning product. So I would say after 20 products, yeah, you might find one that succeeds, but if you don't have the proper budget and let's say you spend 400, $500 on a product test because you get emotionally involved and attached with that product, then that means, okay, I can only test maybe three or four or five more products compared to having 15 or 20 more tries. And the reason why you want that many tries is because with each try, typically you're going to get better at each facet of e-commerce with building the website, with creating the ads, with actually testing the ads and looking at the data to analyze where you can improve. So if you're only just going all in on one product because, okay, my budget's 200 or $300, you're just not gonna succeed. And I'd say another reason why people fail because of their budget is they don't know where to actually allocate that budget. Now, when it comes to the website, I would say when you're a beginner, you shouldn't be spending no more than I would say a hundred dollars a month. You should have the $29 a month Shopify plan and then maybe a few choice apps that you're using. You shouldn't have a whole army of 30, 40 apps because especially if you're advertising on TikTok ads, your site speed is the most important thing. And when you have 40 different apps that all have tons of code that are slowing down your theme, you're just killing your conversion rate. So I would recommend when you're on a budget, make sure you're using maybe five to six apps at max. And then after that, where should you put your budget? Well, I personally would recommend if let's say your budget for advertising is $800 a month, put about $500 of that into the creatives because that is where you're going to see the best return. If your creatives are incredibly well made, that is going to help you spend effectively compared to if you're only putting $200 or $300 into your creatives and trying to use $500 to distribute them, but your creatives suck you can't just distribute crap. I would rather have a smaller budget, but an incredible creative that has a much higher chance of being successful than a crappier creative and trying to just make that work by doing a ton of split tests and trying to manipulate platforms or doing all these different split tests. No, your creatives are always gonna be things that drive the most success for your brand. Now, if you're someone who is entrepreneurial, but you don't have the budget to start e-commerce, you need to be resourceful because there are still ways for you to develop your skills and learn more about e-commerce without having an e-commerce store. And I know that sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but there are huge e-commerce brands, mid-tier, small-tier e-commerce brands, even, even agencies that are always looking for new, talented people that are hungry. A lot of times, they don't care about experience. I know at my own marketing agency, I care more about are you absolutely obsessed and want to be the best at e-commerce? And if I notice you have the right traits, I will hire you over someone who has five, 10 years of e-commerce experience, but doesn't have that same level of drive. So if you're someone who might not have the budget, actually get a job, earn a ton of money while learning more about e-commerce and find the right team where you can learn and develop your skills. And I can guarantee you'll have the right budget and you will have a ton of new information that you would have never learned if you had your own e-commerce brand because a lot of these big brands and agencies have the game already figured out. They know what analytics to look at. They know how to plan their content calendars. They know how to talk to suppliers and you can learn through osmosis by working at these companies. So again, you just gotta be willing to eat shit and realize that, hey, even though this might take a hit on my ego, it's actually gonna help me grow in the long term. And also, with my agency, we are always looking for people that are hungry and hardworking that love e-commerce. So if you are interested in working with an agency because you might not have the budget to start your own brand, then you can click onto bodmiami.com, go to careers, and we are always hiring media buyers that I would love to take on, train, and scale new e-commerce brands. Now I'd say one of the bigger reasons why people fail at dropshipping is they just don't know where to put their time and their schedule. I see most people seem to put half of their time into learning about e-commerce, and then when they actually get onto their brand, they're really fixated on their Shopify store on the apps, on the design, on the branding. And while that stuff kind of matters, I would say the most important things that have attributed to my success at least, product selection all the way. I would say 75% of your success in e-commerce is product related. If you have a crappy product, if you're selling rocks to cavemen, it's not gonna work. They don't need those freaking rocks. But if you're selling something to a dire audience, a people that really need your product, they have a specific pain point that your product can solve, man, that makes it so much easier to scale. But you need to be able to identify the right product. And that usually means, in the beginning at least, you should put at least 50 to 70% of your time into product research, into identifying the right product that is working right now in the specific market. And that means you have to grind these product research tools to find that next winning product because you're competing with other pro dropshippers that have product research teams that are fully trained, that are fully motivated, that know exactly what to do when looking for products. So if you wanna compete with them, I would say yes, most of your time needs to go into product research because that is how important the product is to everything. So you're gonna have to use product research tools like AdSpy or DropPoint or whatever you can afford. Personally, I love PP ads. PP ads I know can be a little expensive for most people, especially the broke boys, 
But for me, I think that is the best tool. And you have to grind through page 30, page 40, page 50 to find the right product that most people maybe are overlooking. Or you'll have to go into TikTok. Do one of the free methods. Go into hashtag summer finds. TikTok made me buy it. What I ordered versus what I got. Go through these products. Do the research. See if the margins are there. See if the wow factor is there. Is it for a younger audience? Is it just a cool product? Can we really market this effectively on TikTok or whatever platform that we're using? Or is this product more for Facebook ads? And yes, there are specific products that should only be sold on Facebook and specific products that should only be sold on TikTok. And then I would say the other part where you should really be putting your time is your ad creatives and your copywriting. Because on your website, I would say the copywriting is the most important thing. Not the logo, not the design of the add to cart button. While that is something you can split test. Social proof, sure, that's important. But copywriting, speaking directly to your audience, doing the market research. Those two things, product research and doing market research on your ad creatives and descriptions, by far that should be, I would say 90 to 95% of your time should be spent on that. If you really want to see any success at all, if you can get good at marketing, that's really what e-commerce and dropshipping is because everyone's selling the same product. So the people that see success with that product are usually the ones that are the best marketers that can put their own unique twist on it. They can do the research and find out the specific pain points that other beginner level marketers that are selling the product just don't know about. And they also have the know with all to split test different headlines and different ad creators because typically the first thing you're going to try is never gonna be the best thing. Even if your conversion rate is a three or 4%, you can always increase that by split testing different things with your headlines, with your prices, with your offers. So if you split test, you're gonna find out what works the best. But with most beginners, they don't do that. They throw up one price, they throw up one generic 40, 50% off offer, and they think that is enough to succeed because they've watched these dropshipping challenges where gurus do that. That's not how e-commerce works in 2022. You have to be split testing. You have to have five, 10, 15 creatives, especially when you're using TikTok ads. I would say you need to refresh your ads and have at least three new creatives every single week. And it's insane with TikTok. They just eat creatives for breakfast. And then with your website, if your conversion rate is low, you have to be changing independent variables. And by independent variables, I mean, you have to change one thing at a time, then measuring it over a course of, I would say at least a week, looking at your conversion rate and seeing, did that make a change for the good or for the bad is it statistically significant and if it is good obviously keep it and then keep on making more changes now i hate to be negative but another reason why you will fail at e-commerce is because you have no systems or frameworks in place and especially when you're drop shipping and you have to test tons of products because usually even with pro drop trippers one in eight products are going to be successful you have to have frameworks for efficiency so that you can do more than your competition because with beginner e-commerce entrepreneurs they think okay if i test one product a month or one product a week i will then eventually become successful but with pro drop trippers they're typically testing two three four five products every single week on one product branded stores where they have a specific framework for how you should build it so that their website team knows how to do that so that they can find a winning product and it's just doing things at scale and the only way you can do things at scale and do more is by having frameworks. So what I would recommend doing is have frameworks for product descriptions with problem solving products. Have a product description framework for non problem solving products. Have frameworks for your ad creatives. Have specific ones for hook, introduce product, two benefits, call to action or TikTok hook problem introduce product. And the only way that you can really come up with these profitable frameworks for your ad creatives is by studying the big boys. You have to go into tools like AdSpy, PP Ads, try to figure out what are the main trends that you're seeing? What are the lengths of these TikToks? What is the music that they're using? What is the type of content? Is it UGC or is it more professional? But you have to come up with the framework so you can analyze and then be efficient when you're testing a product so that you can do everything the same way because you know it works. And it's the same thing with your websites. You should have specific frameworks and guidelines that you follow when you're building your stores. Like with my some ways, I built pretty much every single store exactly like this for the next couple of months until I figure out more ways that I can improve and have different sections in there for social proof and urgency. But for a while, this was my specific framework that I use. So you're going to have to come up with your specific framework for your website, your description, how you find products, how you test them, how you advertise so that you can be efficient and do more because most people think with one test a week, I'm doing so much. But in reality, if you want to get good at something, you typically have to do 10 times more than what you're already doing. And the only way that you can do that is through having frameworks and systems. Now, one of the most important things that I realized in my e-commerce career, if you really want to be successful, is you have to constantly be challenging what you believe to be true. 
Because for me, I had set in stone beliefs that I learned from my mentors and through courses that because they were coming from people of authority, I instantly just didn't question them whatsoever. And that is the complete wrong approach whenever you're doing something and whenever you're learning something in e-commerce. Really, whenever you learn something, what you should do is split test it. You should see if it works for you because with most strategies out there, they're probably not going to work for you. I would say typically, I would say 25 to 30% of things that I learned actually ended up being useful for me. So just because someone who's done more or has done hundreds of millions has done something and it's worked for them doesn't necessarily mean it's set in stone. That should be your belief and that should be how you do everything. So for me, when I was media buying and I've been media buying for four years and I had to learn this lesson recently from hiring a senior media buyer at my agency, he told me that with TikTok ads, you should give them at least two to three days to spend to optimize. And I was never doing that. Whenever I was doing dropshipping, and I learned this from my mentors, always give it one day. And if you don't get sales or if nothing's profitable, just turn it off and then try to test a new product because that product should instantly be a success after one day. And that was a set in stone belief for me that a winning product will always show itself in the first day. But that's not the reality. I actually had to do the testing. And what I learned that if I looked at this campaign right here, and I've showed this in previous videos, if I was analyzing this campaign, and let's say my break even ROAS was 1.6, I don't even really look at ROAS too much. But if it was, then every single campaign here is unprofitable, and I should theoretically kill this product and move on. But what I learned from my senior media buyer is that he just said, give it another day, let TikTok find your audience, let it optimize, and see what happens. And what we did, is I didn't change anything. These campaigns remained exactly intact. Didn't change budgets, didn't change the ads, and every single campaign 3X'd without changing anything at all. And it was just by giving it an extra day. And that totally blew my beliefs. And the only way that you can challenge your beliefs is typically by just learning from higher value people, constantly learning that, oh my gosh, there's definitely more than one way to do something. So if I'm doing something and I'm just not getting results, it's probably because you're set in stone belief isn't actually that set in stone. So I would say with most of the information you learn on the internet, that's typically best practices, but that doesn't mean it's actually gonna work for you. So I know with most people, when they talk about TikTok ads, they always say, okay, TikTok ads need to be short, snappy to the point, 15, 30 seconds, anything above 30 seconds, your audience is just not gonna last that long. They have the attention span of a goldfish. They're just gonna die and just keep on swiping. But when you look at a lot of big brands here, I mean, look at these ads right here, 1.8 million impressions. This is a 56 second ad. This is a 36 second ad with 4.4 million impressions. This one's 34 seconds. So you might have things that you really believe that have to be a certain way. Your website has to be a certain way. The way you organize your information has to be a certain way, but it really doesn't need to be. You can split test. You can really see that if I try this, maybe moving my buy now button above my variance is where it's going to convert the best. Maybe instead of having generic white background photos, I have photos of UGC, of actual customers in my product photos instead to see how that converts better. So you should always be challenging your beliefs because it's rarely ever going to be 100% that a belief is perfect for you. And when it comes to challenging beliefs, that also applies to what you believe is important might not actually be that important or what you believe isn't important might actually make a huge, huge deal. Now, I know for me, I was always the guy where I was making fun of people that were just over analyzing, changing their button colors. I always thought, okay, I mean, is that really gonna make a huge difference? Changing your buy now button from pink to green or from green to black? Like, is that really that big of a split test? And what I've learned from analyzing and from reading these top marketers that have eight and nine figure e-commerce brands, that stuff is stuff that they really are religious about, where if you split test from green to black, all right, you need to be testing it for two weeks. If that improves the conversion rate by even 0 0.02 or 0 0.03, that's the difference of millions and millions of dollars. So they are measuring everything, the text of their price. They're measuring how big it is. Should they do little? Should they do small? With the add to cart button, making sure it is above the fold, making sure that you're putting it maybe even above the variance, having a countdown timer versus not having a countdown timer, having gifts in your description versus having product videos. Every single thing that these big marketers do, they are split testing and they are doing it over the course of multiple weeks so that is statistically significant. So you might think something is really not that important, but it actually is incredibly important. And But if you are a smaller brand, I would say the main things you should focus on are your product research and your copywriting and your marketing. If you can get better at those two things, that will make the biggest difference. And then once you get to the six and seven figure level, you can overanalyze the different minutia. But in the beginning, you should just be focusing on getting the foundation and the fundamentals with those key things. And I would say the final thing that will help you become successful with e-commerce is just understanding how to react in different situations. Because with most people, you throw up your ad, you're analyzing it for a few days and you're like, okay, what do I do now? 
And you need to have KPIs in your mind whenever you are throwing up any campaign at all. You need to know what is success and what is not. And if you're noticing that certain metrics are not at your KPIs, what do you do? So if I look at this campaign right here, I can see that my cost per click is about 55 cents. That is something that is pretty decent. My CTR is above 2%. That's really good for an ad. I can see, okay, my add to cart number nine out of 152 link clicks. That's also pretty good. That's above my 5% KPI. So if I notice though, that it's below my 5% add to cart percentage, what should we do? Well, then we might have to add some urgency. We might have to change up the offer. Maybe this offer right here isn't super enticing and we have to do a buy one, get one free deal or a buy one, get one 40% off deal. Or maybe we just don't have enough information and that's preventing people from clicking to add to cart because maybe they just don't know how to use your product and you need to add a section, which is three steps on how to use this product. Or maybe they are just not convinced by your social proof. There's not enough social proof at all. So you might have to add reviews at the top of the fold. And that's what most big brands do. They always have a review pretty much as soon as you click onto their website. You might need to add some trust badges or you might have to change up your fonts. Maybe your fonts are the problem. People just don't like those or it's just your add to cart button isn't enticing enough. And I know it seems so little, but these little tests, even though they don't seem that big, can make huge differences just because, all right, this is a really small thing on the website does not mean it doesn't make a huge difference in your conversion rate. So if you know how to react in different situations, you are incredibly likely to succeed. So if you know, all right, my add to cart's low, that's a website problem. If my cost per click is too high, that's an ad problem, or I'm just marketing to audiences that are way too saturated. So I need to switch that up, market to different people, go more broad, maybe change the ad account. Because if you know what to do in different situations, then you can keep products alive. And I know in so many cases, people give up on products way too early because they don't know how to react to data but your goal should be with every single product test to try to make that product a winner. Give it enough time and be able to react to the data because usually the first time you test it, it's not going to work and you need to be able to adjust because if you never adjust and you just keep on moving on to the next product and doing it in the same crappy way, you're never going to find a winner.